<laughs> Jair Lynch, and I'm currently 39. I grew up in Shepherd Park, in Washington, D.C., uh, which is in Ward 4. Uh, I currently live in the Shaw neighborhood between U Street and Logan Circle, and so that is considered Ward 2. I think the, my parents were very um, dedicated to uh, uh, having a connection to the Caribbean and to Latin America. My mother's actually from Colombia, my dad's from Trinidad. And so uh, we would take long trips um, and sacrifice to do those things um, to make sure that we were connected to our family and connected to the places in which they came from because both my parents uh, met at Georgia, I'm sorry, at Johns Hopkins. At the Center of International Studies in the 60s, um, as a result of leaving their home home countries and coming to Washington to look for a brighter future. Uh, first major project was the uh, redevelopment of the uh, first African American YMCA at 12th and uh, 12th and T Street. Um, it was previously called the Anthony Bowen YMCA. Um, it was purchased by the Thurgood Marshall Center Trust, and I was brought in to assist the trust in terms of creating a development business plan that actually would be financeable and achievable over a long period of time. So we took the building and turned it into a mixed-use um, project with office on most of the upper floors, a museum slash conference center on the first floor, and a school on the ground floor. I mean, when I came back to Washington, D.C., uh, because of my training in both civil engineering and design, I recognized that the, the Shaw U Street corridor was going to be one that would blossom over time. Uh, people always ask, you know, when do you know a place is hot? And I always say back, it depends what hat you have on. If you're an urban designer, you're supposed to look about 10 years out. Um, and then you look at the bones, you look at the, the historical character, you look at, uh, in this case, that a metro station was opening in the corridor, you looked at an employee base um, with the district government as well as the uh, university that's around, you're walkable to the central business district. As an urban designer, you say that's a place that's going to go. Um, as a customer, you say a place is hot and you can get all the goods and services that you want. A cup of coffee, a sit down restaurant, cleaners. So that's six or seven years forward. Well, as a good investor, I need to be right in front of where the urban designers decide that the place is hot. And so that's why we invested here in 1999 and bought this building we knew that this area was going to move, and we knew we needed to have feet on the ground to be able to make the investments at the appropriate time to then provide those goods and services that people want by making a great place. No. Well, we want to reimagine neighborhoods, and we want to make them mature. For us, we think that that's going to be defined differently than it was for the last 50 years. Um, over the last 50 years, especially in the 40s and 50s, you define prosperity in uh, independence and that usually came with your own house, your own pick white picket fence, and your own uh, car. And it also usually came with racial segregation and often, often class segregation. Well we find define prosperity much differently now. We think it's walkable, it's urban, it's mixed in terms of incomes, it's mixed in terms of ages, it's mixed in terms of, of races and genders and all the other things that go along with that. Um, and through that, we think those become extraordinary neighborhoods because they're alive 24-7. Um, they have a heartbeat, they have a soul. And through that, we have authenticity that we've now all decided to run away, with, run away from um, as it relates to the old model, which is the suburban model that was there for so many, so many years.